Okay, so uh, I think I have it all set up my end now. Um, so how are you doing, Andre? I'm fine. And how about you? Yeah, top of the world. Top of the world, mate. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I see you got the, that uh, up, upside down, down cross there. The upside down cross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what what do we what do we think when we see the upside down cross? Yeah, probably either like uh, Satanism, black metal, or uh, uh, something like that. Like I like black metal music. It's like uh, often uh, contains that kind of uh, yeah. That's with, that that's um, right. And so for me, this isn't um, anti Christ. I'm not antichrist um in that uh, i think that christ um depicts the ideal human being you know wise uh helpful useful um you know uh and honorable and so i don't have a problem with all those attributes what i have a problem with is fake christians and yeah. everyone i've ever met has been a fake motherfucker and we can look all over the internet and we can see all these churches. They're all fucking fake. They're Vatican. Fake, fake, fake. Christianity yeah. for, for thousands of years has been fake. Preaching, you know, all these wonderful attributes and then murdering and, and slaughtering and, you know, controlling and all the rest of it in the name of God and in the name of Jesus. What a bunch of fucking hypocrisy, really. I, I've got no time for them motherfuckers at all. And so uh, I've banished um, all of them from my channel. I've slayed them all and threw them in the snake pit where they belong. So, so what do you think about uh, more like uh, Serbian Orthodox Christianity and such a thing? I, I, I myself can think uh, that that's a better kind of Christianity. They have a lot of beautiful symbolic aesthetics and they still... Uh, contrived within them some kind of uh, um, semblance of uh, their former pagan religions as well within the church and so on you know you, you can see the god of thunder within uh, Slavic culture and so on they still have that besides you know right yeah and I, th I think really um, all cultures and religions uh, they still really do worship the pagan facets. I mean, at the end of the day, in the Western world, we, we celebrate Christmas and Easter um, and, you know, sometimes the, um, the solstices. It's all pagan stuff. And um, so, you know, I made a video earlier and uh, I'm, I'm speaking about um, how people... They just don't know anything about anything. They don't know why they're doing whatever they're doing. They never stop for a moment to think about it. They're just led along and controlled and manipulated. Um, but um, in relation to um, Orthodox uh, Judaism, uh, I think that particular God um, was the biggest abomination um, and manifest manifest in the the cosmos uh because he was a hateful jealous uh, manipulative all these you know negative satanistic uh attributes um that you could ever you know consider uh and then you know the 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 actual serpent coined as satan in the bible was um demonized because he said to adam and eve well if you eat from that tree then you'll be like them and you'll know the difference between right and wrong. And I can't see any wrong in that, you know. And um, where did all this negative stuff come from? Just because he said, look, you know, you'll know the difference between right and wrong. What, what, where's the wrong in that? I can't find any wrong in knowing the difference between right and wrong. You know, well, what do you think about that? Um I would say that I... I'm neither this or that, you know. I uh, often feel that there is so much more to build on, so much more to to bridge the gap within, uh, like the blanket of uh, different pieces. And 
I don't have everything yet, and I have uh, changed uh, changed uh, my view on, on things many times. But it has often been a development into something. You know, uh, nihilism, like Nietzsche and so on, can play a certain part, a certain um, stage in life. Also, you know, because nihilism has uh, ser uh, served a certain certain purpose in the bigger picture then you might go into something else where it's less nihilistic and so on you know and um, back to the question again what i think about uh, uh, the serpent uh, and uh, the, the even adam so to speak i don't know don't know i, I don't really know uh, because uh, uh, maybe some people shouldn't be uh, be blessed with uh, that fruit, you know. Some people might not. Uh, uh, it might serve them better to not eat the fruit, you know. Yeah. So what? Keep them in ignorance. If people are in abject ignorance, what do you say? To keep them in ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, that's probably. A lot better, you know, uh, for certain people. Uh, but 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 uh, I get it. We spill over to something else here, which uh, deviates a little bit from uh, the the Garden of Eden. But uh, in a way, it uh, it uh, touch upon it. It's a certain thing that I've thought about. You know, um, you know, uh, in a Hindu tradition, they have a different castes. They have like the workers which is the Sudras, and they have the uh, Vaisha, which is the, like, uh, uh, merchants and so on, you know? And then higher up the scale, you have the uh, Kshatriya, which is the warrior caste. Then at the top, they have the Brahman, which is the, like, ascetic ones. And the Sudras, they are Sudras, and they want to be Sudras, because they couldn't be anything else. Because the Sudras, they are possessed by the like lower demons and stuff, you know. They are manipulated by their desires. That's why they need to be down there, you know. Yeah. Uh, and to, to the Indians, anything about them being there would be ridiculous. And then they would be thrown out of the caste system. Yes. And uh, of course, the caste system had uh, changed through times and so so on as well. But at its uh, golden age, so to speak, it was like, I want to be in this caste because I am that caste, you know. I, I, I preach to these uh, entities over here, but the Brahman uh, caste is the highest one. But there's also the possibility to transcend the caste system then you go beyond the brahman and the kshatriya and so on you know and yeah when we look at uh, buddhism and we look at siddhartha uh, the buddha uh, well him being a prince he was privileged uh, into doing basically whatever he wanted to do because he would never need to work uh, forever being princely there'd always be somebody that would be prepared to 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 feed him and cater for him and so it was his prerogative to sit under a bow tree um forever contemplating uh and discovering the nature of what it is to be man now when we look at the caste system it isn't the prerogative uh, and, and pleasure uh, of the lower caste to be able to do that because they have to till the soil they have to work under the sun very very hard for their existence and so therefore then uh, they are struggling with demons they are struggling with all the manifestations of their desires to rise themselves up out of the mire to you know earn themselves um, some privileges which are uh, blessed upon um, you know princes and um, other privileged people and so when we look at that caste system the caste system derives out of a country of millions and 
billions of people, you know, an enormous amount of people scratching around for limited resources. And those that raised up somehow by privilege or, or birth or whatever, then they would be in a position whereby they could sit under a tree and contemplate the nature of the universe. And so it would be their um, cosmically given um, uh, privilege to, to, to be able to do that. And so when you're born into that higher caste, well, the higher caste of Brahman, well, that's your bag. But if you're born into the lower caste, that isn't your bag. You've got to suffer, scratch around and die in poverty and suffer from all different sorts of illnesses through now malnutrition and all that sort of thing. So when we see how these religions derived, we can see that, well, they de derived out of a natural course of, of things. And um, then the, the, the human mind has um, uh, projected onto uh, humanity uh, a certain hierarchical system and placed um, themselves within the higher realms, of course, because the people that wrote about this had the privilege to take the time to contemplate about it. Yeah. Uh, I think, of course, there's uh, when, when it uh, be become divided into a caste system, it also becomes a split, and the, the longer time uh, continues, the more split up it becomes, uh, so to speak. Uh, so, so it so so it derives from uh, from one, and then it multiplies, so to speak. Yeah, but but uh, uh, also I would see that uh, maybe also modern age we throw a lot of shit at the um, the, the primordial people. You know, they even uh, try to tell us that we come from monkeys and so on. I, I believe it might be the other way around that the, the monkeys uh, are previously human beings that have. Fallen, so to speak. Right. Even lower. <laughs> That's an interesting concept. Yeah, uh, and I think uh, uh, it's like uh, saying that uh, we come from monkeys and so on. It's like, look at what you're coming from. You are yeah. actually this. And then when we develop into this age, you know, they say we're just getting smarter and smarter while we actually, uh, not, not saying we, but the masses getting dumber and dumber, and it probably has uh, continued that way for longer than we might imagine, you know? Yeah, I don't know. People just have TikTok brains anyway, you know? Yeah, I don't really think it's been any different, and I can't see any reason why it would have been any different. The only difference that I consider that uh, people of a few hundred years ago would have had over and above the people of today, they would have had a closer relationship to their pagan roots, um, what it is to be a human being uh, connected to the world. Uh, and they would have the greatest of respect for the seasons and for the soil and for all nature because they would have to live as one with it. And uh, but because we've become detached from that, um, now nobody wants to take an interest in it um, because they've been beguiled into electronic digitary. And now, you know, they are in a different state of consciousness. But uh, they're still stupid, just as w w there were probably thousands of years ago. Um, and, you know, again, I made another video today and, and, and I'm speculating, why is it that, that there's such a diversity with human consciousness? And why is it that for some people, you know, such as yourself, you know, you have a higher state of consciousness over and above um, the minions. And it's kind of like, well, is it about our culture? Is it about our upbringing? Is it about circumstances that happen and this and the other? Is it the, because we're old souls and we're reincarnated thousands of times? You know, why is it that, that some of us uh, feel this connection? Uh, we, we have the ability uh, to, to see um, many more things than the, the societal drones do. And so, are there different species entirely? There's so many things to take into consideration. I think there is many things that play a part there. But listen to some people what they eat. 
Uh, I mean, you you probably have your own disgusting version of uh, uh, native foods in your country that is really unhealthy. Yeah, uh, we ha have the same, like uh, uh, people eating sausages and uh, shitty stuff uh, that is just processed food and so on, and they think that it's the most delicious food that they ever eaten. I haven't watched your cooking videos uh, any uh, uh, nowadays, you know. I have seen some before, and I can see you are eating good food. You are not eating shit food, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think what you put in your body with with, uh, with some um, some um, like nuance to it, you are kind of dumb if you just eat shit you know and it is like this so within so without so above so below you know and vice versa yeah you know the inside reflects uh, reflects the outside and the outside reflects the inside if uh, you, <coughs> you are an ugly person you you will look ugly as well you know and uh, looking at you 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 have a good uh, facial features and all that kind of stuff. I had too, my whole family had that, you know? <laughs> uh, except that my father looked like a combination between uh, 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 like a banker Jew and uh, Charles Manson or something because right. he drinks <laughs> too much alcohol. <laughs> Sounds like an evil concoction if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> a banker Jew and Charles Manson. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, yeah yeah so you know it, 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 we, we we could um speculate um the origins of man's consciousness you know forever but uh we look around and we, we just see that you know many people are unconscious and um so getting back to to this uh th there's been too many occasions in my life where I have been confronted with so-called Christians and um, I've engaged with them and I've known them, you know, pretty well and I've found them to be very fallible uh, and potentially disgusting uh, human beings. And the worst thing about them um, over and above anything else, look, we can all be accepted for being failed um as the perfect human being nobody is perfect you know we're all you know struggling with that one yeah but when you've got these um you know christians that um say they love jesus and jesus is king and god and their eternity and ever and but and if you say something uh, in contradiction to that then you see their face get the greatest of, of, of anger and, and devilish like features and you know many of them will want to be violent uh, with you and if we look at all over the world uh, what goes on with religion with the muslims and the christians been going on forever it's all about murder it's all about hate and so whatever they're fucking preaching in in their bullshit fucking ass wiping pages of those books um it, it doesn't amount to nothing in those despicable human beings because they still can't live with one another they still can't do the right thing and if you don't happen to agree with them then you will see and feel their wrath and so that's what i'm in contestation about because i think they're fucking vermin okay i i think like uh, I am suspicious of them. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, there's nuances also, uh, especially Protestantism and uh, so on, I, I would say is the worst of the, uh, this uh, uh, um, and not the And not the Catholics. The Protestantism is like a democratization of the church uh, because uh, uh, Martin Luther had uh, so much faults within himself. So he just make it a bit easier. So he was really a failed monk. So I m must say it's less elitist. And that's what uh, I don't like, you know. Yeah, but then when we look at the Catholic Church, I mean, you know, if, if they 
project themselves to be all, you know, holier than thou and whiter than white. Well, they're the biggest bunch of fucking fake, um, you know, assholes and, and pedophiles on the planet, uh, masquerading as something that they're not, you know, with all different sorts of uh, Satanistic arch- iconography. Um, and so, uh, you know, and I, the amount of people intellectuals that i've listened to um british intellectuals let, let, let's say um stephen fry and um uh, there's a couple of brothers um I'll think of their names um, in a minute, but very intellectual. They've got the greatest disdain for the Catholic Church. And anybody that's been involved in that then then, um, realised how perverted it is in sexual realms and um, responsible for all the buggery that's going on. And then when people come out of Hitchens, Peter Hitchens and Chris Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens and Peter Hitchens, right? Uh, They're British intellectuals. One of them's dead now. Um, But, you know, the, the... they uh, have been speaking against uh, Catholicism for a long, long time. Uh, it doesn't matter whatever way you look at it, it's evil. Um, and even if you, you think it's benevolent, uh, well, what facet of it is benevolent? The controlling facet, the lying facet, uh, the, the, the money uh, gathering facet, the property yeah, yeah. and wealth gathering facet. You know, what? where's benevolence? You know, if if the, you you have a church which is worth its salt, it it shouldn't own anything. Every single penny that it's got should go back into the community, and then all it needs is is figureheads uh, which live humble fucking lives like they're supposed to, like the people they're representing. Jesus led a humble life, uh, but they don't. They they live in fucking palaces and they've got fucking you know entourages and bulletproof cars because they fucking need them. You know. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying isn't like uh, uh, that Catholicism is any good because what I think is that there has been infiltrations. There always are infiltrations. But uh, I don't know when I heard it, but there hasn't always been pedophile within uh, the Catholic Church, probably one another, but not that many that it is today. And uh, because uh, if you want to, like, uh, break the Catholic Church down, you n- just need to infiltrate. And, uh, uh, and uh, if you see some tendency towards a perverted thing, you can entice them to get the, their, uh, their uh, people to fall towards that instead, you know. And uh, there might be some good ones as well. Well, uh, I don't really know too much about uh, Catholic people because I haven't talked about Catholicism with uh, Catholics or anything like that, you know. Uh, I have uh, talked with Orthodox people and so on, you know. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But all these people, religious people, they are indoctrinated, they're brainwashed, they are very unintelligent. Uh, even though some of them may have PhDs and, you know, be professors and this, that, and the other, all they've done is gone through the uh, parrot fashioning of education, um, remembering what was placed in front of them from their textbooks. And uh, then they get awarded and rewarded for repeating this bullshit. So the, the system's all set up to produce more of them. And, you know, when these people masquerading with their PhDs and they're speaking about the intricacies of um, the biblical scripture and they are trying most desperately to make it sound reasonable and rational uh, when it's actually hateful and disgusting and vile, um, doesn't make any fucking sense at all. You just look at these people and you go, well, you're evidently Satan. You know, there's no there's no reasonable way out of it. You evidently are Satan because everything you're saying is just designed to beguile and deceive and manipulate and have control over. You know, come and join the Catholic Church. Come under the wings. Why? Why would we want to be a member of, of, of your silly fucking fraternity? You know, if we have something in our heart which which enables us um gives rise to us being solid human beings why do we need that fucking bullshit why do we need to have a, a blooded pierced fucking 
dying man uh, on, on, on our chest um, as a symbol of, of their belief. What do they believe in? It seems to me they believe in the blood sacrifice. You know, because that's what, what happened. And they're glorifying the blood sacrifice, just like any uh, beast would glorify a uh, blood yeah, sacrifice. Yeah, and uh, also they worship an idol, even when they And they I worship idol and the graven images. It's all fucking wrong. Every single bit of it is just wrong. And, and so the, the, the greatest objection I've got uh, to those fools is uh, their stupidity. Uh, their ignorance, their, their lower uh, intelligence, uh, their stupidity, uh, and how they've just been beguiled uh, in, into uh, believing, um, you, you know, a, a crock of shit and selectively picking out little bits from here and there, which uh, make... Jesus or God sound a little bit good, but then neglecting all the stuff that, you know, particularly makes um, uh, Jehovah or, 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 you you know, the the, the, uh, Hebrew God, um, you know, look bad because there's just a million um, examples of that fucking creature, which is supposed to be the Elohim, uh, look bad. You know, look, for one thing, all we've got to say is like, when he flooded the world and killed everything because he was pissed off with his creation of man, well, you know, why did he kill all the animals as well? What did they have to do with it? Nothing. Why couldn't he have been just selective and just gone, ah, you know, I'm going to fucking put a spell on you and you're going to die. You know, why did he have to do something like, you know, bullshit like a flood and drown every fucker? It's just hell. It's hate. It's horrible. And so this is it. And I I swear that if humanity ever fucking sees any sense, then they'll all be heading in this direction. And this direction is just, you know, forget about all of that bullshit that they speak about is God up in the fucking sky and the creator and this and the other. No, 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 no. We go back inside our rational minds, if anybody can find theirs, and we go back into our hearts and we, we come once again to the glory of the cosmos and we ask ourselves, well, what's really going on here? Uh, the human being has an amazing imagination to be able to conjure all different sorts of things. And that's all they've done through mythology, through religion, through everything. We've just invented things, figments of our imagination. And so, you know, when's the intelligent people going to come around and go, look, it's all imagination. The whole fucking thing's imagination. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, is there a God sitting on the clouds? You know, is the Jesus going to come back again? If so, where is he coming from? Where are these motherfuckers coming from? You know, yeah, he should have uh, come back a long time ago, probably. Mm. Uh, so, uh, why would he come anytime soon? You know, they yeah. believed in that back in uh, like uh, even 2000 years ago uh, uh, when he had died, that he will come back, you know, for yeah. 100 years. You know? It's the height of stupidity. Anyway, yes. So, do you get frustrated very often with your family, friends, and peers due to their, you know, lower intelligence? I mean, because when when you are, you know, blessed as some of us are, um, you look around and you just go, "I'm not from here. I can't be from here. It's, this this is just a fucking. It's just a farm. They're just fucking animals. No more intelligence than the sheep." You know what's going on? Yeah, uh, I I mean it's uh, there certainly are people out there that I have found, and that what uh, uh, like um, if uh, one is observant, you you might then see somebody that pops up like uh, like uh, on uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, a Vietnamese guy uh, uh, said uh, to me something about I need to shave my head uh, in a more proper way because I had cuts in my head. He said. Right. Uh, and then he started to talk about stuff and uh, start talk about, uh, uh, yeah, you, you know, with the hermetic principles and all that kind of stuff, you know. So, and he, he d- didn't want to work anymore and he 
he uh, just wanted to zoom out and so on, you know. And uh, I could see that he was a smart dude, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not discounting that they are around. It's just that the, the percentage-wise, that they're very yeah. small. Uh, I, I mean, that's beyond, uh, that's beyond uh, uh, frustrating, really, because I have uh, given up on that in one way, you know. They need to show that to me that they are capable, you know. I, I would uh, well, well, hesitate to talk too much uh, with them because they will not get it anyway. So I will just zoom out a bit if i need to you know yeah and so um um my book is um uh going to be available that's from tomorrow that's the publishing day and uh, mm -hmm. if it all goes to plan like amazon said it's going to then it's going to be available the kindle version is already available um but the paperback um is ready for launch uh, tomorrow yeah uh, both uh, me my two um um closest friends uh, will buy it we we were five before now we are three three again you know uh because of the cir circumstances but uh, uh, we will put it into our reading list because i can't keep up with reading on a computer screen and so yeah. on I, I read a bunch of chapters then i thought ah Nah, that, uh, I, I want less computer time. I want more of the Yes, game, you know? indeed. Now, um, what you read before is very different to what um, is published because I completely revamped the whole thing. And um, so, you know, when you buy the book, thank you for that. Um, start at the beginning, not assuming that you know anything um, yeah. uh, from previous um, accounts, because um, it, it would be quite a lot different. Um, and what I'm saying about the book is that it's, um, it's like a spiritual Bible. I consider that it's probably one of the few books that will be on the market which will take people through the spiritual journey from the beginning to the end, from um, a, a state of egoic um, um, existence, let's say, to um, enlightenment. And, um, you know, people can scoff uh, if they consider that uh, they don't think I'm enlightened because they've got some idea of what an enlightened person should be like. But what I would say to them is read the book and then read uh, many, many other varieties of religious and spiritual works and then see if you see um, you can draw any uh, similes. And um, you see... The path involves uh, the dark night of the soul, the hero's journey, um, to, uh, all different sorts of things like this, encounters, supernatural and spiritual encounters. And, and so in this book, it takes you through from the very, very beginning of my living, um, very egotistically, um, to where I am now, uh, having not worked in 14 years and um, become a master of my own destiny and um, you know how uh, I feel about the experiences that, that, that I've had and um, hopefully um, uh, mature people will read the book and then they will be able to uh, see certain similes with my journey to theirs um, and um, take something from it, from, you know, in that way. Uh, there is about 300 sub-chapters uh, in the book, and the book's about 700 pages. And so it, it is pretty uh, intense, and it incorporates a lot of stuff. Um, and so it would be interesting to uh, speak with people, such so as yourself, who have listened to it, read it, and, uh, you know, took it on board. And um, uh, you, you feel it and you absorb it as a living entity because that that's basically what it is it's a living entity it, it is spirit itself and when you are a spirited living entity then you will have a relationship with it you know like you and the father will become one it's the union with with, with um the creator and, and and that's what it's about it's about me uh, this thing finding union with the cosmos
Yeah. So I will probably be be uh, of uh, of the closest people to me to be the first one to read it, you know, uh, because we we orthodoxly uh, go through a book reading list, you know. Right. I have my own book reading list, and uh, then we when we have a uh, stamped down a book reading list, we go with that, you know. So I will put it uh, uh, under the next one because they, they follow a certain order. But I will read it beside this list anyway, you know. Yeah. And um, the, the the I think the uh, well one of the um, positives of the book is because it has so many sub chapters, then people can actually you know. Um, treat it like a spiritual bible you know the bible um and you know i'm not even talking about any comparisons to that because that book you know as far as i can see doesn't even have a fucking patch on what i've written because what i've written is a true experience of a human being in this dimension where in the book there's nothing that's fucking true and real and there's nobody's personal experience in there it's just you know a crock of fucking bullshit stories that uh, can be interpreted in a million different fucking ways and so if somebody picks up my book and says to themselves well I'm a spiritual person or I'm kind of a religious person, I'm not quite sure but when they read that book they'll be confronted with so many things that are going to be you know, uh, a powerful impression upon them which may help them you know, make a decision but um, I, I would uh, recommend that nobody makes a decision about anything from reading my book you make a decision on your personal experience because that's the only thing that's true to anybody yeah, a certain book can mean cer certain things in di different uh, times of one's life as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I often experience that. So one book, uh, when you uh, would uh, read it at a certain point in life, might not mean much, while it mean a lot at another time in life. And, um, you know, we all benefit from reading uh, stuff over and over again. And, um yeah. You know, I'm um, currently, um, I've got several books. That I'll show you what, what I'm getting through at this moment in time and what I've been through. So what, while you're doing that to kind of show a little bit what I have here, and uh, this is the book I have. And, um, what, what, what are you reading at the moment? What, what do you say? What are you reading at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I read Eros and the Mysteries of uh, Love, the Metaphysic of Sex by Julius Evola. Aha! Okay, well, that's, that's very interesting because uh, I have... Yeah, okay. Now, that one, that was written, what, around about 1930 or something like that? I don't know. It, uh, I don't think it says in the book, you know. Oh, we'll, we'll say the first edition when it was printed. Um, did this was, okay, copyright 1969. Okay. But, but I think it might be... Uh, uh, that uh, this is just for the English version because the the it uh, has well, been. Well, I think that's one of his Italian. first books, and he died in 1972, and so he's born yeah. in like 1895 or something. Now then, look. Oh yeah, I have that one here also. Only that I have taken off this one. Right. So it's so, the same so, book. so so ride the tiger. Uh, yeah. And then um, the uh, revolt against the modern world. Now, I've oh, just yeah. listened to the audio of revolt against the modern world. And somebody recommended um, this dude to me because he says that my videos sound very much like him. And listening to him and reading him um, basically is like listening to myself. And so it's kind of like it's a bit bizarre when that happens because there's, there's so much of what this guy um, ha has said and what he thought and what he put down for possibly 
posterity is uh, what I have concluded, um, you know, on my journey. Yeah, that's pretty cool, eh? Hey? Uh, yeah. And the, a revolt against the modern world, I like that one as well, yeah? Yeah. We're actually reading that in the book group no, now, but I have read it uh, at the, entirely also. Right. And, and so, um, are you familiar with um, Rupert Sheldrake? I have heard the name, but uh, I'm not familiar. Uh, yes, yes, now I know. The, it's him who talks about the resonance. What Morphic is, what resonance. Word? Yes, yes. Yes. Now, morphic resonance, of course, is, is really important um, for the human psyche and to know where we're coming from and how things work. And um, alongside that, um, I read uh, this book. Looks interesting, yeah? Egregores. This is about the manifestation of uh, spirits energy which sometimes manifest into some sort of corporality now then jesus jehovah uh, buddha allah all these um, entities they're egregores uh, they, they, they have had so much human energy focused on it that they've become actually like uh, uh, eternal gods and so if we understand uh, egregores, how these powerful um, uh, entities make manifest. Listen, even Jesus, if he never actually existed, it's just a story. In many people's mind now, he does exist. And due to the focus over all the world for, you know, 2000 years, then that name has become a very, very powerful entity and um, an actual living being because people will kill in the name of him because they think he's real and so you know we can see how uh, the human being uh, gets very very beguiled uh, in many ways and actually creates its own reality out of its mind that's all that's going on here is the manifestation of human consciousness which creates everything so if we take that one into consideration along with the egregores uh, yeah. then we take um jungian archetypes yeah Yeah. So the archetypes and the collective unconscious uh, mixed in with the egregores and with the morphic resonance, uh, then we start to see the metaphysical making manifest. And we see that this is a metaphysical dimension. Um, and there is, you know, in fact, no physical uh, world and so the more we uh, have an allegiance and uh, an, an understanding of these metaphysical things then the greater will understand what we are hmm. so over and above those um milton's paradise lost okay yeah now within here um milton he, he speaks about his idea of the manifestation of the devil you see, um, and it's very important because these these books, I don't know, written 100 years ago or, or fucking close on that, um, they have warped uh, human consciousness uh, into a certain realm in relation to the, the, the fiction and fictitious um, uh, figure of the devil. And so they've made an egregore out of it, which is a living thing that we should be afraid of. But the fact is the fucking devil, Satan, evil, it all pertains to the human soul the human heart, the human consciousness. And so what we've done is because we are it, we are everything, we have projected that out into figures like this. And and so you know, people just don't know this stuff. The vast majority of people just can't get their heads around it. They just think yeah. it's fucking insane because of their level of manipulation. This book here, The Second yeah, Coming of Christ. Yeah. And this is the, this is the, the one of two. I've already read the first one. And this is Paramahansa Yogananda. This is a brilliant book because what this guy writes about, he, he comes at it from a philosophical, spiritual and religious realm. And he's not like, you know, oh, Jesus, fucking masturbator. You know, he, he he's looking at things from an intelligent perspective. And it's it, it, the first one was a fucking superb read, you know, very rational application of things. 
Mm. Then I've read this one recent times, David Icke. This mm. is David Icke's like twentieth um, book, and what he's saying in it that it's only a dream. This fucking thing is a dream, right? There's no physical shit going on here. It's all a manifestation of human consciousness. And so uh, this book isn't so um, philosophical because it's written, you know, for, you know, the man in the street. But he's on the right lines, you know. And then when you look at um, people like this, Blavatsky, right? Yeah. You've heard of her? Yeah. Yeah. And wasn't she much of a fraud too, you know? No, there's always someone that's going to say she's for this and the other, you know, because it's it's all the yin and the yang. It's the countering of this and that. You know, the, look, it's misinformation, disinformation. But the, this woman, she 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 just like her many people said that she she was downloading information from the spiritual world by a certain group of of people, and um, because she, she she wrote so prolifically. So extensively. Look, here's three of her books. Mm. Right? You know, if you are a fraud and if you're going to be inventing shit, then how the fuck do you make it manifest into this? You know, a lifetime's work. Um, it's just bollocks. People mm. like this, they, they, they are deeply spiritual, gifted people. And they're speaking from the beyond. And so there's no, there's no fucking fraud about it. You know, these people are, are seriously, you know, gifted intellectuals. Okay, okay. Because, because I haven't looked into that that well, I heard about her having seances and stuff like that that wasn't really real seances and so on and uh, that uh, um, my brother told me that uh, she uh, had a connection to cia and stuff like that you know but she couldn't have had a connection to the cia the cia wasn't invented until about the fucking 1930s uh, okay i see i see you know and mm. and so um this one there maps of meaning jordan peterson yeah um, I, I'm kind of like this far into it this month in time. Uh, it, it, it delves deep into neuroscience and, you know, uh, psychology and stuff like that. And um, it's not a pleasant read. It's a hard read. Uh, but, yeah. but that's the nature of him. He's, he's a very, very, you know, intense person. And so um, when I've got to the, the, the end of that, then I'll, um, you know, speak about that. And then this one. Peter Kingsley's Reality. Hmm. Now, this book I've already read uh, three times in its entirety. And I remember the first time I read it, it was the most powerful book that I've ever read in my life. And so uh, I'm going to be reading it for the third time. And so this is why um, it's very, very important and powerful to keep reading um, books that have made an impression on us to see how we grow, to see what they mean to us at the later stage, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I love this book, you know, The Crisis of the Modern World. Right. By René Guénon. Do you know him? No. Uh, he's actually mentor of Julius Evola. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So and but uh, I would say that René Guénon in this book is uh, easier than Julius Evola because uh, Julius Evola can have a certain grandiose language sometimes I think right okay but uh, I really <laughs> like Julius Evola too you yeah? know yeah and um, so you know. When I'm making my videos and, you know, I'm, I'm getting, you know, a little bit irate um, because people are, are not responding. Um, well, they have to have some sort of similar depth if they're going to be getting remotely where I'm coming from. And um, that's not going to be easy to do. You know, I'm 60 years old. I'm very well read and very well traveled. And, you know, I've got a, a level of intelligence which can, um, you know, think for itself and, and um, you know, enter into new uh, paradigms and territories which most people can't go. And, and so, um, but, but this is what we find when we are, you know, um, 
uh, driven with with uh, some sort of intellectual spiritualism um and but but what i will say it is satisfying when i come upon people like uh, julius evola that um you know if he died in 71, you know, it's, it's a good few years before, um, you know, these modern times. And so I'm been, I've been speaking about all that stuff. My philosophy, you know, even to, to the Nazis, it's my philosophy down to a T, down to fascism. You know, there, yeah. there, there is a necessity and a requirement uh, for the, a certain facet of fascism um, in the world. And we can see that it still exists today, only it's in a different guise. And people can't recognise it because they're not told it's fascism. It's fucking fascism. It never died. The Nazis never died. They never went away. They just fucking but, went to America. Yeah, yeah, of course. They went uh, both to NASA and uh, all kinds of uh, institutions yeah. in America. But they... Often they, they had an ultimatum also, I think, because many of those under Nuremberg were at the, uh, New, New, Nuremberg. Nuremberg. Yeah, was uh, like um, tortured, you know? Yeah. Most of them had their testicle crushed. So what you say under those circumstances and what you do under those circumstances, okay, I... I probably just go within uh, and if you don't want your balls turning to sawdust then you just go and work for them and um you know i I would think that you know a scientist is a special sort of person and they don't care uh what politics are uh prevalent at any particular time they are intent on doing what they do uh because they, they are seeking um for the knowledge in their realm and so it makes no difference to them whether they're working for uh, the nazis or the fucking cia you know uh, basically yeah. the same thing yeah absolutely uh, b- b- because i i would absolutely think that the less spiritual path i i mean you could see many uh, interesting esoteric uh, things in the third reich as well you know uh, and uh, they also had uh, this uh, expedition towards the holy grail you know with uh, heinrich himmler and so on yeah which i feel, find very fascinating i well I himmler would... He, yeah. he sent expeditions all over the world. He sent yeah. them into the mountains, into Tibet and to the fucking Antarctica and um, all different sorts of places because he was looking for all of this esoteric stuff. He was deeply bound in it. And, um, you know, he, he believed in the power of, um, you know, um, these m- mystical realms and, um, you know, the, the search for the grail. He was so desperate, um, you know, to find the Holy Grail. And yeah. um, so, you know, he sent special, uh, paratrooping regiments, um, you know, to fly into this country and that country and do all different sorts of stuff. Um, and um, so, yeah, the, the, the Nazis uh, were premised in very esoteric metaphysical stuff, um, you know, which gave birth to their ideology of, you, you know, area yeah. and all that. You recognize this old symbol here. I have yeah. had it uh, since I was a teenager, but it's, it's actually SS, you know? Right, yeah. Uh, like uh, Heinrich Schimmler had it on his like hat here. Yeah. Uh, so I always liked uh, that kind of stuff, you know? Even if I don't consider myself being political or any uh, of that branch or... Uh, 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 like a follower of a certain ideology, I always find it very beautiful, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, if we look at what went on uh, during those years in the Second World War and what uh, the motive was, um, the, the Nazi Party um, were very well aware that they were um, a, a parasitical um uh, not even a nation, a sub-nation uh, within their country, which was bleeding it dry. And th- this sub-nation had been doing this all over the fucking world uh, forever. And it was in the history books, and every single country had uh, banished them and expelled them. 
and told them that, you know, they better get the fuck out of our country because they all knew what they were like and they still know what they're like today only because, but, but they have been so powerful now that they govern and manipulate all what is said and everybody else comes under their jurisdiction. And so it's just been a role reversal, you see, because they were the money people. And countries at the time uh, saw these, um, you know, money-making machines emerging and taking over their countries like, you know, parasites, uh, and they wanted to do something about it. But because they've had the fingers in pies in so many countries all over the world, it was it was inevitable that they were going to take over uh, from the sleeping masses because very few people could d d discern the plan, what, 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 what was, was making manifest, you know. But now the plan is almost complete, and in, in certain literature you can see that you know, they know this, you know, protocols of Zion and um, all different sorts of stuff like that. And if you look at the world now, well, we know who the, the power people are. We know where the money is and we know what jurisdiction we come under. And you always know who leads and rules uh, from what you can't say. Now, you can't say anything about them. And so therefore, you know that they're the ones in the positions um, of power. Yeah. And... Um... I think I think it uh, it's a pretty easy question to find out certain stuff about, but uh, then people have this uh, reflex in the back of their mind to not search down that path because they have been traumatized from it in one way or form through school, school and all that yeah. kind of stuff, you know. So even when you try to talk with somebody that is fairly intelligent, they will some often have hard to go down that path, you know? Yeah, because there's these, there's these walls uh, yeah. which have been put in place as children and it's about this is good and that is bad and you know all the good things you know jesus and you know jehovah and you know democracy and and all this and all the bad things is communism and fascism and you know satanism and blah 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 but at the end of the day you see, what they do is, um, you know, they hold up a pretty picture of something and they say, come towards this pretty picture. But behind that pretty picture is all the evil that they've been pointing about. And so they are the perpetrators of evil and, and control and machinations and all the rest of it. And, you know, it's all hypocrisy from the beginning to the end. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's a case of like, well, look, this this world is governed by black magic. There's no doubt about that with the propaganda and the symbolism and the, and the rhetoric and everything. It's all under the cloak of black magic. Um, but I, I look at it and I, you know, I've, I've thought long and hard whether it actually could ever be any other way. Um, and I, I'm not sure that, that it could be. Um, if you are... Um, if you're looking at 8 billion, uh, let's say, let's say 7.5 billion at the very fucking least, um, herd like creatures, which are intent on just gobbling up resources uh, of the world. Well, by this time in 10 years' time, then there's probably going to be like, I don't know, 16, because the the the, the, the growth um, curve is astronomical these days. And certain people have considered that, you know, they look at all these figures and they go, well, we've got to do something about this. Uh, it's insustainable. And so, therefore, then there's certain, you know, provisions put in place to deal with that. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it's no different to what a farmer would do. If you've, you've got a farm and you are catering uh, for a certain amount of people who eat beef and then you, you've had a bumpy year and you've got loads of calves and everything and you haven't got the the, the, the um, desire for the beef and you haven't got the market for it, it's, it's a case of, well, I, I don't want to keep feeding all these fucking uh, cows and that because I haven't got the market for it, you know, so therefore you do your own culling, don't you? Um, yeah. and, 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 and that's how it is, just business. This world is a business. And uh, yeah. when we look at how it is, well, um, cold uh, business uh, plans need to be put into place. But, but, but uh, 
it has always been like that right yeah so, but but uh, if you think about like the mythological age of hyperborea and atlantis if that existed uh, then it might have been in a different way you know and um, also if you, we go back to if we, we say that the, the bible have some semblance uh, what is written there like those uh, people in the long long far gone time uh, couldn't imagine what would be today we couldn't imagine what their time was like you know in one way so the gap is so far in between i wouldn't mm -hmm. think that as well you know and we're talking about uh, uh, you know all the, the giants and stuff that they have found and so on also in egypt and so on yeah, so there's been lots of different um, varieties of hominid. Uh, I don't have any doubt about that. You know, yeah. then then we look at um, you know the Nephilim, which it says in the Bible. In those days, there were giants. If the Bible is supposed to be inspired or the Word of God, then that also has to be true. Everybody has to believe in that that we were fucking giants and they're about thirty feet tall, uh, and then there were these Nephilim were about twelve or fifteen feet tall. Um, yeah. And so you know, humans did battle with those um, th throughout history, and. Um, then when we look at um, uh, lots of places around the world, if we go down into Peru, you, you can see cone-headed skulls in Peru with red hair, uh, huge eye sockets, uh, big jaws, uh, yeah. only one fissure in the skull where we yeah. have two, human beings have two, they only have one fissure. And so that is, um, you know, a, a, a physical uh, difference and there's no way we can talk a way out of it. Um, some people say that, oh, you know, uh, in the old days, uh, they used to put boards, strap boards to babies' heads when they were young and uh, they'd, they'd tie them around and then they'd force their head to be elongated. Yes, that was true. That's what they did do. But why did they do that? The reason why they did it, because they were fucking beings living in the world with these natural uh, shaped cone heads which uh, the simple people wanted to emulate because it was like a aristocratic breed so yeah and then when we look I, i've been to egypt and i've been to the museum in cairo and uh, literally at least 50 percent of these uh, mummies they are red haired yeah and, and exactly. so where are the red hair depictions in in, in the uh, hieroglyphics um in, in in any of these fucking tombs they aren't there they're all black hair when the actual fact is most of these mummies are blonde or red haired they're Aryan. Yeah. these statues on easter island uh with with red uh, on top of their heads they are 30 foot um, stone statues and then they've got a variety of red coral type stone which which didn't come from that region it came from somewhere else on the world and they placed them on top of the head indicative of red hair and so mm. uh akhenaten and tutankhamun you know they had this uh cone-shaped head they used to hide it in some sort of a fucking cone-shaped hat you know uh, egyptologists don't want to talk about it nobody wants to talk about it nobody wants to talk about blonde and red-haired egyptian pharaohs you know what the fuck's going on yeah no it's like uh they, they don't want to show the superiority of some over another, you know? Yes, yes. That is the realm we're in now. That's the postmodernist. That's the yeah. liberalist. Uh, there's no way they ever want to point out that there's been differences between any of us. And some of us have been smarter, more powerful than this, that, and the other. No, we're all the same. We're all fucking mediocre, weak, and powerless. Uh, because if the world is, is considered to be like that, then those people, um, you know, who are in power, then they have all the fucking power. And that's how they like it, you see. They want to be the ones in power. So they take power away from everybody else and, um, you know, bury um, uh, all the information, burn all the information and, and, and kill anybody that's still speaking about it. They've been doing that for thousands of years. Um, but, you know, the, the, the facts are that, the, you know, this remnants around of cone shaped skulls, there's lots of them. They've got red fucking hair and, you know, blonde hair and nobody's speaking about it. Uh, it's all stifled. It's all closed down. And, 
you know, oh my God, talk about conspiracy. Yeah. I'm going to do um, a, a video chat tomorrow, actually, with um, yeah. Zig Zagzilla um, yeah. uh, f from the States. Uh, and we're going to be speaking about all these alien connections and the Nephilim and Unaki and all different sorts of stuff like that. So, um, you know, that might be an interesting conversation for some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you know, I I uh, mostly spend time reading books like uh, this uh, nowadays, you know, uh, uh, and uh, I, when I then uh, look at video, I do it a little bit every now and then, you know, but not so often as uh, before, you know. Um, but um, uh, I, I just wanted to tr try something and see, see if you come up with certain things when I read something from a book, you know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Just let me pause this. Just let me go to, to the toilet quickly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, So I read one here. Emotional impulses hinder reflection and making use of this incompatibility is one of the dishonest tricks practiced in politics. Um, that, that's one thing that I find interesting in combination with... Uh, who, who says that? Evola? Uh, René Guénon. Oh, okay. Uh, Similar to Evola uh, then, yeah. Yeah. The opinion uh, on another page, they say, the opinion of the majority cannot be anything but an expression of incompetence. Whether this is uh, this be due to lack of intelligence or to ignorance. And uh, pure and simple, certain observations of mass psychology might be quoted here. In particular, the widely known fact that the aggregate of men mental reactions aroused among the component individuals of a crowd crystallizes into a sort of general psychosis, whose level is not merely not that of the average, but actually that of the lowest element present. Yeah, exactly. This sort of stuff people can't say today. And when you look for Julius Evola on uh, Google, uh, the first thing it opens with is, oh, he's a fascist, you know, yeah. and a Nazi supporter. They want to do everything to, to uh, diminish what this person said. But this person was a very bright a uh, rational thinking person. He looked at the world and he saw that the vast majority of people are fucking idiots like, you know, any thinking person sees. Um, but the powers that be these days don't want anybody saying that because they want to reduce everybody to that same level. Yeah, and all they need to do is uh, utter a couple of words that uh, make people... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking at that and I'm not like that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and while Evola was very complex person he was like okay he might consider certain things and facets from uh, da, those uh, people positive while other uh, aspects negative you, you know he, yeah. he was both a critic and uh, saw also a positive force in certain aspects Exactly. So his assessment of um, the National Socialist Party, um, he saw lots of it was positive and, you know, some of it was, was negative. And um, but, you know, this is throughout the whole of the world. I mean, people looking at Mother Teresa would find something fucking negative in her. Um, yeah. And so this is this is life. Um, but, you know, just to discount something, throw the baby out with the bathwater because there's a little bit of fucking yin in the yang. You know, this is the ignorance and this is stupidity and this is fucking muppetry of the people today who will dismiss, um, you know, a whole array of good intellectual stuff just because there's a little bit that they don't agree with or they've been told not to agree with it. And, yeah. you know, on, on that premise, you just got to know that the idiot in the street, they just need um, controlling, um, suppressing, uh, punishing and uh, all the rest of it. Um, you know, the world, humankind gets what it fucking deserves. And, um, you know, every time we look at any given society, well, that's the, 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 the people of the time getting what they deserve. Yeah. So... 
the 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 lack of uh, thoughtfulness and intelligence in uh, the average you has actually just proved being worse than I thought at a certain point in time, you know? Right. At a certain point in time, I had a pretty positive view of uh, people, but also skeptic, you know? But because I thought to myself, because I have read this certain thing, you at least, they must have re read a little bit, then I had a so hard time to get my mind into that they have no interest in certain things, you know? And uh, I, I thought that was uh, like, even when I knew they didn't have something within me said, but they must know certain things, you know? But uh, then after times, uh, I just realized that, well, why? Uh, and yeah, that they are, they were more stupid than I thought, you know? Yeah. And uh, these last years have just proven it even more, you know? You know? They just uh, put whatever shit they can in their body and uh, do as they are being told. And uh, the one, uh, the, the most kind people, kind people are often the most worst people you can meet, you know? Because they will eat you uh, or, or stab you in the back. Uh, yeah. Because they are maggots, uh, like ma maggot-like creatures, you know. Yeah. Be because they have no claws at all, so they go beyond your back instead, you know. Yeah, and so when we look at um, people who have taken power in the world through history, um, well, they took it because somebody had to. Somebody had to take jurisdiction over this cesspool um of um you know delicate little shrinking violet pink apes uh, and the thing is about you know the lower echelons of society if they get a little bit of information a little bit of knowledge then they get vastly over and above themselves thinking that they know everything about the cosmos and yeah. you know this is so uh, prolifically stated by intelligent people they say that you know the worst people you can ever meet are, are these idiots that just have a little bit of information uh, because they they think they know everything and, um, you know, they've got no idea about this um, concept of the more we learn, the more we realize how little we know. Yeah, they, they, people know that. They, they think they just can learn certain phrases and regurgitate them. But when pushed at them, they don't know anything, you know. Yeah. It's how it works, you know. It's uh, like... Uh, yeah. And so, um, with the publication of my book, um, I'm kind of like, you know, going to hang around YouTube for a while to see if there's anything manifest out of it, which is remotely interesting for me. Um, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'll just close the channel down again and I'll be gone uh, writing my next book and set up a site somewhere else uh, in a different realm um, of um, intelligence and intellectuals. Um, y you know, YouTube really isn't the place, uh, to be fair. Uh, and, uh, you know, anywhere which is uh, given to the masses, you know, isn't the place. The, you know, this is why, you know, secret societies like the Masons and, you know, um, Knights Templar and all those sort of things were set up because it it just has to be so. You, you know, you, you can't mingle with the fools. You, you've got to, um, you know, move into um, your own specific select realm. And yeah. so um, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be picking selectively uh, the people who I want to read the book and I'll be sending this book to them. People have got their channels up, you know, and, um, you know, people are hungry for the stuff like, like some of us are. And um, then if they read the book and uh, they find it interesting, then, you know, I can hold conversation with them. Um, yeah. 
because it's kind of like, well, it's my experience, it's my perspective, my point of view. And if people haven't had my experiences, then they won't have that point of view. And they may think it curious or they may want to question a few things. And I'm, you know, I'm all up for that to explain how, you know, things came to be so for me. Yeah. And uh, as the time passed, we will get into the book together also in our uh, group setting, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, that will be interesting. We, we, we have done this for a pretty long time, this book reading stuff, you know. And uh, we, we get uh, all our brains together instead of uh, one only, you know. Yeah, so then you, you mull it over and you discuss and you, you try and work out what, you know, the author is trying to say and things like that. And, you know, I'm saying to my viewers, you know, the beauty of, um, you know, buying uh, this book is that you do have um, uh, the facility for speaking with the author. Uh, how yeah. many people can say that they actually have the facility for uh, speaking with the author if they so desire? Now, you know, I don't know how long this will be an opportunity for, um, yeah. because if, um, let's say the book's been around two years and um, I'm getting quite a few emails from people who want to speak about it, then, you know, I'll be very selective of who I speak to. But, yeah. um you know, so it, 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 I suppose it will be quite interesting. Um, and, you know, it, it's kind of like the right people have to read it because um, um, some people reputedly have read the old draft and uh, they said, oh, I read it in eight hours. And um, I went, well, what of it? Oh, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, you know, well written or well, whatever. Did, did something move it? Did something you know uh compel you did what did it set you thinking no i mean for fuck's sake if if, if, if a person look my book's thicker than that mm. this is a uh, 586 pages mine's fucking 700 pages and and so if a person can read a book like that and not have anything to converse about then i fucking rest my case on 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 the downfall of humanity you know yeah yeah, there, there will certainly be a lot to converse about. Uh, I mean, uh, there's uh, the, the psychedelic, there's the dreaming world, uh, there's... Uh, the astral there, world. Uh, yeah, and uh, also the mountain climbing, which I find very interesting, you know? Yeah, different uh, facets. And then, and then, then I broach um, uh, the Tao Te Ching and Brahman and um, the simulation, uh, egregores, and, um, you know, what is faith? What is belief? What is fucking uh, religion? D d d does um, confession really work? What is prayer? There's just 300 um, subchapters. And so there's a lot of stuff in there. And uh, if people can't be fucking moved to one hour, uh, an hour's conversation about that, then uh, they should look for the nearest fucking cliff, really. That's what I'll say. <laughs> the fucking guide to being a lemon. Uh, it, it is the other part. Uh, uh, what are you, what are you about to say? Sorry? What are you about to say? Oh, I don't know. No, oh, okay. There was a thing that I, I have a thought about myself. I, I sometimes think about, hmm, am I arrogant? You know? Maybe I come across as arrogant. Or maybe I am arrogant, you know? Um, but at the same time, it's hard for not stupid people to perceive you as arrogant you know yeah so it uh, i mean i always analyze uh, aspects within myself you know and uh, I, I look inward as, as well so so if i come across as arrogant it it's not necessarily arrogance it's just perceiving things as they are and they talk about it, you know? Yeah, well, the, the, the thing that we should never do 
is judge ourselves, measure ourselves against the lower echelons of muppetry because yeah, they will have you. all different sorts of things to say about us in their ignorance and their uh, jealousy and their projections. Um, yeah. If um, intellectuals uh, considered you to be arrogant, uh, then, you know, you could speak with them. You can say, well, okay, so, you know, what facet of, um, you know, being self-assertive or, or, or opinionated or uh, having the greatest of uh, adherence to your own uh, perspective is a bad thing. That's what I would say. And, you know, if anyone, you know, in the past, people used to level at me ego. I mean, they haven't done that in a long time. Um, I, I think um, most of them have realized that I've got a good fucking reason uh, to, to, you know, have a powerful ego. Um, you know, because if, if there's like a hundred people watching me, then the chances are I'm more best, I'm more better traveled than all of them put together. I may have read more fucking books than them put together. And so they might just need to stop themselves before they project anything onto me. And I'll say to them, well, if you think I'm arrogant, and egotistical, and this, that, and the other, just tell me what's bad about that. That's, that's my yeah. attitude. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you, your whole being is showing uh, professionalism as well. I mean, you have the musculature and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's not just here like... Uh, bookworm or something with yeah. thin arms <laughs> like that you know uh, or it's not just a brute without the brain but it's a brute with the brain you know yes it, it, it's it's the whole thing and it's kind of like you know being my age now 60 years old um i know how to live i know how to do it this is it this is what you yeah. see this is what you see from a stimulated mind and body this is the variety of human being that isn't an average thing and uh, yeah. if people feel feel intimidated uh, in the presence of it then they should get the fuck away uh, because this ain't about to change any day soon you know and um, mm -hmm. so uh, lots of my viewers, uh, they think highly of themselves, um, which is uh, what I'm looking for. People that have good reason to think highly of themselves because uh, of their achievements and because of their knowledge and because they're different to the, the, the fucking idiot, you know. And so um, that's all really what I've been endeavoring to um, to seek out uh, people um of a similar disposition and outlook on life because look i'm not bothered uh, if um, you know somebody has 10 phds and they're all humble and and oh oh yeah i respect that i've got no respect for that at all i hate those motherfuckers because somewhere deep inside they're cowards and and they're 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 just living uh, at the mercy of one other person which is going to go, oh, you're arrogant, or you're an egotist, or oh, you're a fascist, or you're this and that. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to ever to offend you. Fuck <laughs> it. Be a real fucking person. You know, <laughs> I used to love, um, you know, the intellectuals of, say, like about 20 years ago, because they just tell it how it fucking is. But you yeah. can't tell anybody like that these days. They're all bowing down and subservient and, and groveling. Uh, uh, yeah, and, walking and over eggshells all the time. Sorry? Walking over eggshells all yeah, the time. Yeah, all the time. They must and, um, formulate themselves in a way that doesn't offend anybody. Yeah. And so, you know, my channel now, I mean, I, I took like um, six months off. I just took the channel down six months off and then I put it back up again. And um, it, every day there's, there's new subscribers and um, the subscriptions never go down. It doesn't matter what I say. Uh, the subscriptions never go down. People may go away, but they keep the subscription there because there's all something that wants to make them come back. You know, the, once I've planted a seed in them um, of reality, you know, then it doesn't matter what beliefs they've got. Um, there's something that, that, that in, in their distant minds is telling them that um, there's something of value and the laws keep coming back, you know. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, whatever I say is the closest to that that any motherfucker will get. Reality. Reality. 
And so this book, by the way, is one of the world renowned books, Reality by Ben uh, Peter Kinsley. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've even forgotten, you know, what it was about because um, uh, I've read so much. And it was um, I think the last time I read this was like about six years ago. Uh, and so um, um, I'm going to, you know, get through. Yeah, I'll get through this in, in say, like three days. Um, and then just to recap and to see what an impression it made on me this time around, you know. Hmm. But okay. uh, there's there's lots of stuff we 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 um can absorb and we can be acquainted with and, and everything and um I, i'm at the point now whereby i've been doing this you know for 14 years and it's kind of like well of course i had to write the book um and now i've got three other books that i'm going to be cracking on with um uh, also there won't be as long uh, this book took me nine months uh, from the very beginning to the actual publication. Uh, and so I can knock out a, 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 an average size book, 250 pages within three or four months. And so um, that's um, what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've got lots of uh, different subject matter. Um, and so I'm going to be doing that and um, then just, just putting them out there, you know, uh, because I, I think at the end of the day, if you are uh, endowed with um, a certain richness of uh, being a human being, then it's your duty to, to pay forward. And I, I don't um, get why anybody wouldn't do that. Uh, why anybody, you know, if they've travelled the world, they want to write a fucking book about it. You know? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we, we will buy it, uh, you, you know. <laughs> so... so um you know it, it it comes you know at a certain uh yeah pretty soon but not right away i need to get in some money first you know before i buy it well why do you need to get money before you write a book i never need any money uh no before i buy your book i need to uh, oh money, you, you know? need to get some money well the the book um the kindle version is 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 uh fucking uh six uh dollars uh and the uh, paperback is um uh 26 pounds or yeah that, that, 26 dollars uh, yeah that's pretty cheap you know i i thought it would be like uh, uh, 700 or something because of the pages you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah you, you see the thing but, is but, about yeah. books um you could price yourself out of the market uh books by rights should be worth um you know a lot there's a recent author that i was listening to um and his book is for 65 pounds Hardly anybody's going to be buying that book because people mm. just don't spend that amount of money really on books unless they're yeah. scholars and really want that book. Um, and, and particularly for an unknown author, um, you know, I, I, I'm not in this to make the money. You know, mm. um, I, I wrote it because the universe uh, compelled me to. And whatever, yeah. whatever um, you know, comes of it, well, that's it. If people take to it, if they reject it, it's, it's no skin off my nose. I'm, I'm not bothered either way. You know, it's no. something that, that, that there's been my experience and I've paid it forward and I've done my bit in my sojourn here. And I'll be on to the next book, you know. But um you know, I would find it, you know, quite interesting if people, you know, wanted to, um, you know, engage with me on it and, and, and um, you know, ask certain questions about some of the, you know, profundity and, and the depths of it. I just think, well, that's fucking what being a human is about. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you You really want that and uh, ho hope for it too, you know. And... Uh... Yeah, uh, what uh, we we always buy the books uh, we ha have on our, our list, so it it, uh, it uh, there, there will always be things to say about it. But uh, we uh, the the list we read will always take uh, the time it takes to read the list. You know. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you see, if you um, this book is on Amazon.com. 
Yeah. And so you're not in Britain. So in Britain is is probably the most expensive because it's twenty six pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 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 um, uh, you can buy the same book for twenty six dollars, and yeah. um, I think it's going to be a little bit less in euros. But um, uh, because you're in a little little consortium between the three of you, you know, it, it's kind of like fucking eight quid each or eight yeah, euros yeah. each. You know, well, too. we we used to buy books together, also, you know. So, yeah 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 you we have gone through so many books uh, throughout the years now since we started this we we have been five all together we have uh, been uh, like um, uh we are pendulum uh, between five and three you know but uh, we have always stayed consistent with it you know and, and we're what what we have also said today, it is like no place for taking in girlfriends or anything like that because it should be like a, a like um, authority. It should always be the patriarch, I think. Uh, right. Like uh, like the sun is uh, ordered at the top, so the moon is uh, subordinated yeah. to the sun, so to speak. Exactly, and, and so. so- what would you uh, recommend as is the most powerful esoteric book that you you've ever read that's really been out there and really you know uh, rocked your world i mean the, the the books i'm sort of thinking about is um people like um rudolf steiner uh people that write just way out stuff about the spiritual dimension of this world what sort of uh, stuff would you recommend I, I mean, I love Bhagavad Gita. Right. I just love that book, you know. And I, I want to read it uh, from different translators as well. Yeah. I just, uh, I have read the Swedish uh, version uh, of it. I have read the Hare Krishna, which is a far bigger book, you know. Yeah. Uh, where, uh, you, you know, they have uh, the extra written in it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have written it uh, without uh, Hare, Hare Krishna as well, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, like he with the strange name that the Beatles uh, went to in the 60s or 70s. What? Um, uh, Yogi Marishi Mahara? Maybe that was his name. The, the, the guy that, um, you know, started off the transcendental meditation thing. Uh, it was uh, he who was in the Hare Krishna movement. Oh, Hare Krishna. Let's see here. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was his name? Um, his Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prahubada. Ah, uh, yeah. They all call themselves Swami because that means teacher, I think, in Hindu. Oh, okay. But, um, mm. okay. Yeah, that, that would, would be one of my favorite, actually. Yeah. Why? Why is it, why why is that your favorite? I mean, what 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 is it that you take from that 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 puts that I mean, over uh, above? He. It's like uh, he he. Uh, have a, a speak with himself, you know, with the higher self and the, the ego. And he he's asking himself why he need to fight uh, his own relatives and so on, because yeah. they are the, on the dark side, so to speak. Yeah. But um, there's nothing that will hinder what will happen. So he can just stay present, you know. He have a confrontation with himself, Aryuna, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Hare Krishna is leading him on the way. And also, Hare Krishna says that if you pray to the other gods but me, you just pray to me but in the wrong way. Right. So there's only one God, even in uh, Hindu, mm-hmm. but they are praying to other gods, you know. I yeah. think that also is uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. But what do you think 
Uh, yeah, okay. You had something to say about it. Mm, yeah. I was just going to say about the, the Bhagavad Gita. It's kind of like, you know, it's being confronted with the self and, and doing what you know instinctively and intuitively to be right and to keep the emotions out of it. Uh, so yeah. you're going into battle to fight your family members who have risen up against you. Uh, you don't want to do it. Well, you know, you can't emasculate yourself. You can't lay yourself down before them. You've got to do the right thing. You've got to stand firm and you've got to do what you believe in. And if you consider yeah. them wrong, then you've got to, you know, um, stand against uh, that, that negative energy. It doesn't matter what form it comes in. You, you, you've got to stand by. Uh, your truth and uh, so yeah I mean um, it's, it's good messages is um, uh, to yeah. Um, yeah maybe not your favorite but uh, uh, as it uh, sounds but uh, I I I think I like it also because of the, the warrior aspect you know mm -hmm. uh, that's a certain facet that I really like but this is a really simple book, but I actually love this. It's also one of my favorite, even if it's simple, you know, practicing. The oh, power yeah. Of yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not the power of now, but practicing the power of now. Right. Because it's uh, cut down a bit and it's the most uh, basic things from it. And I like it very much because even everything uh, that is written in it, it draws you into uh, the now again you know yeah well i mean that power of now i read that again um you know three times um maybe really four times and um yeah it's um you know the, the, there's a very good reason why it was the world's bestseller you know it, it was a good message and um, if people you know, use that as their Bible, then they, they wouldn't go far wrong. Being present and, um, you know, doing the right thing from a human perspective. Um, what else can we do? That's all we can do. And, um, yeah. you know, we don't need to bring in, in, in any uh, fiction of religion into it. You know, we just take it from uh, all that we know for sure, which is ourselves, you know, our spirit, um, our humanism, um, you know, without praying to pies and the fucking sky. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, wh where I am at this moment in time is, um, you know, putting uh, all these um, psychological things together, uh, encompassing psychology with spirituality uh and philosophy uh th there that's the triune for me you know it's the psychology the philosophy and the spirituality um you know it's not the father the son and the holy ghost um per se but it is uh father son and the holy ghost in the metaphysical uh, metaphorical way um and um yeah Basically, it all boils down to um, a consciousness. Uh, the be all and the end all of this dimension is something is conscious. And that is God, that is Lord, that is Creator, whatever it is, who knows? It's everything by all accounts, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. It's everything conceivable. Uh, and ultimately, we um, are figments and shards of God in the mind of God. And uh, that's that's um, you know my um, hypothesis. That's uh, my truth, and yeah. um, you know uh, I get to that. Yeah. In the end. So, so what are your favorite books? I have uh, two more that I I think is Play to the Republic is a great book. I love right. that. Book. Yeah, uh, you know, I I would want to read more of Plato's book because that one is so great, you know. Yeah, I mean, the allegory of the cave is um, the one that stands out for me as being Plato's best work. Um, I, I couldn't really get along with the Republic because there was stuff that um, it was a bit fantasy and it was not really reality. 
um, you know, the ideal republic. It's kind of like whenever we deal with any idealism, it's only ideal. It's not, you know, uh, ever going to be real because of the idealism, the fantasy version. It's a, like a goal to strive for. It's not like uh, he says it himself in the book also that uh, somewhere up in the heaven, this ideal state exists, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, that's the thing about being a human being, you know? We can think very lofty thoughts, uh, but yeah. we just can't fucking live up to them. <laughs> yeah. But uh, still, I think there is a lot to gain for a person that need principles and all that stuff you know i always have been a person of many principles you know mm. because i think it's important to have that you know yeah but some uh, some just lack that to begin with you know yeah well, uh, that's I, right I, I, what do you say i said that's right yeah and the, one of the, the, the greatest um, things that, you know, always, always struck me about um, the Plato's Republic is that um, all leaders uh, who are um, uh, kings via divinity, because that's where these kings derive from, it's always via divinity, uh, that they also should be philosophers. So you don't just get a bloodline that, you know, takes hold of the helm of humanity because they... Um, you know, are born from a certain seed. No, they have to earn it. And so therefore, they would have needed to have been in the greatest and deepest of study uh, in philosophy to be able to uh, rise to the occasion of them being leader. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, also, he, he, he points out uh, different rulership a lot like the philosophers should be the ruler it's the ultimate uh, state so to speak yeah and the, the next best state would be like that i call the timocrats i think uh, which is based on honor which is the um spartan when it, then when that descends er uh, on a branch down uh, comes down a little bit then it becomes oligarchy. And then we know that the, that is the gathering of the most riches, you know, mm -hmm. one that has that. And then the next worst is democracy. And the worst of all, democracy leads to tyranny. Mm -hmm. So there's where we are now. We have had democracy, then it falls into tyranny. Yeah. And, um, you know, be interesting to see where it goes next, because we're at a very uh, pinnacle time in the development of the human being. Um, we have tried all these different sorts of methods of um, living and, and leadership and everything. And um, now I think we're still looking for something new. And so what, what that something new will be um, is anyone's guess. But the, the way the powers that be are uh, heading towards, uh, it seems like it's going to be uh, a basic dictatorship, um, a, a, um, an artificial intelligence uh, governed dictatorship uh, overseen by um, an oligarchy, basically. Um, you know, that that's where we are now. The, the world is under the jurisdiction of an oligarchy, uh, even though we still think, um, some people do in any way, that, 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 that we are in a democracy. We're not. We're, 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 we're in uh, an oligarchy, and uh, the powerful people are making all the decisions uh, on the world. And uh, they want to take more power, have more jurisdiction, uh, and give uh, the man in the street less. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I don't have any problem with that because um, uh, the human being will get what it deserves. And, um, you know, me in my time of life, um, I've never considered that they've ever had any jurisdiction over me. And I don't consider that they ever will, you know, because this jurisdiction thing is about you accepting it. If you don't accept yes. it, then, they, then you, they can't have power over you because there is one law. And that law that they all operate from is, you know, curiously, it's the law of the Old Testament and it's, it's all governed on 
um, their divinity, their 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 divine um, gift of leadership, but they can't abuse that. You see, there's some level they can't abuse that. So when we look into the uh, the Talmud, um, you know, which is basically the Jewish Bible, really, it's not the um, the Old Testament. Uh, it's the Talmud because um, you know that has all the the ways in which to live written down in that. And um, you know, there's certain things that they just can't do uh, because if it flies in the face of natural law, then it's going to come back on them. So they always yeah. have to know that, you know. They, they are very forceful in their uh, way of being. They, yeah, they, they are not the... Uh, what, what do you say? I was going to say that they, they get everyone to do their dirty work and they'll make suggestions. And then if we buy it and take it, it uh, doesn't matter if it's of a detriment to us. If we keep giving away our freedom, giving it away, giving it away, giving it away, as long as we chose that, then they don't have, then the universe doesn't have any retribution to them. But if they force it upon, force it upon us, then of course there is retribution. And that's natural law. They, they, are, they are governed by natural law because the no natural law is, is more powerful than them. And if they try to go against the natural law, then it's going to tear them to pieces. So they have to operate within natural law. And they beguile us and they offer us all these trinkets and wonderful things to entrap ourselves and, and give away all of our power. Uh, and because we do that, then we've chosen it ourselves. We can't hold anything against them and they can't, can't be held in judgment for it either. Mm. And so we can see that, yeah. that that's the premise of natural law. Because whenever we've had states in the past and they've ruled by the sword or, you know, um, by being overpowering and domineering and, um, you know, forcing people into doing this and that, all those oligarchs or monarchs have all had their heads on spikes at the end of the day uh, because the natural way will always rebel against that. And so mm. it's kind of like uh, what they're, they're doing. They're like farmers sheep farmers and uh, they offer the food to the sheep and if the sheep follow and eat it and then they walk into this narrow little pasture or you know they they follow the other sheep into these other realms into their enclosure then that's it that that that's that's the farmer's job um but if one of the uh, sheep ever decides that i don't want to be in here i'm going to break down this fence then you know the farmer, you know, has to allow that to happen, you know, which is a certain exercise in the free will. And, yeah. and of course, not many of the sheep are going to follow that direction. And so I think um, w w ultimately the world is going to um, split uh, into the herd, which are going to be governed and manipulated. And, you know, they're going to be bought and sold, basically. And then you're going to have the awoken variety, which are not going to be buying into that. You know, the, yeah. the, the variety of you and me and, you know, some of the viewers and, and lots of people who are awoken, we're never, ever going to be bound by their jurisdiction. And so we're going to have our own and they will have to allow us to have our own outside of their jurisdiction. Yeah. Hmm. Because it's it's against cosmic law. Yeah. And so on that note, then we've done um, um, one hour and 50 minutes. I think that's a good time to, to yeah. um, wrap this one up to make it um, feasible for people to um, watch. Uh, any videos over and above that get a bit too intimidating and people don't want to bother. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I say, the book's out um, tomorrow then. Uh, let me know when you got a copy and uh, you want to have a chat about it. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, and uh, um, that that will be in the middle of the month, uh, mm. I will buy it. So uh, probably middle of this month. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, we're uh, already in the middle uh, of or this month. The, the end of this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, anyway, as I think friend, you should uh, read this as well, you know. Yeah, it's a small book, and uh, that, yeah. that is also one of my favorite. I read it five times already. The Circus of the Modern World. I'll make a note of that. 
the, the, the crisis of the modern oh, the world. Crisis. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, same thing. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, well, great to uh, speak with you again, Andre. And uh, so I look forward to our next chat. And, um, you know, in the interim, we'll just keep keeping it real, yeah? Yeah. All righty then. Over and out. <laughs> Over and out. Bye. See you, bud. Bye.